measurements every day. Although we use measurements every day, many of the measurement units that we use in the United States are different than the, the measurement units used by chemists and other scientists. So for the most part, scientists, including chemists, use a collection of units called the metric system. And we're going to talk about these units in detail in a few minutes. There's a slightly modified version of the metric system known as the SI system. Scientists will sometimes use SI units for some of their measurements as well. It's very similar to the metric system with a couple of minor differences. I should point out that the SI system comes from a French phrase which basically means the international system of units. So units of measurement. This is a table from your textbook and it shows the major units that are used by the metric system and the SI system. So for example, the metric system uses the meter to measure length and so does the SI system. So hopefully you know what length is, but just in case, length is a measurement of how far apart two things are from each other. If you measure your height, you're measuring length, which is basically how far apart the bottom of your feet are from the top of your head. If you don't know how long a meter is, a meter is slightly longer than three feet. It's actually about three feet and three inches. The metric system uses the liter to measure volume. Volume is basically how much space something takes up in three dimensions. You uh, may buy two liter bottles of soda, and if you do, then you're using the metric system when you purchase these bottles of soda. Two liters tells you how much space the liquid in those bottles takes up in three dimensions. Here's a situation where the SI units are a little weird. The SI, unit, the SI system uses cubic meters, abbreviated m to the third power, to describe volume. We probably won't use uh, cubic meters in this course, so you don't have to memorize that one. Uh, for measuring mass, the metric system uses the gram. The concept of mass is actually very difficult to define formally. However, I have two informal ways of thinking about what mass is. First, mass is how much stuff of something you have. Materials with a lot of mass have, are made of more stuff. Materials with less mass are made of less stuff. Obviously, stuff is not a very technical and it's not a very precise term, but it might help, you, uh, help give you a vague understanding of what mass is. The second informal definition of what mass is, is that mass describes how much something weighs. In other words, heavier things have more mass and lighter things have less mass. Now, I want to point out that this definition is not quite correct. The mass of something is not the same thing as the weight of something, but for most of our purposes in this course, we can think of them as being equal to each other. And as I mentioned, the metric system uses the gram as its base unit for mass. Just to give you an idea of how much one gram is, a paper clip weighs about one gram, or has a mass of about one gram. The SI system is a little bit different here. It uses the kilogram or kilogram, which is just 1,000 grams put together. The metric system also measures temperature, and it uses the units of degrees Celsius for temperature. I imagine that unless you're from Europe or a, a different foreign country, you're more used to hearing temperature reported in degrees Fahrenheit, but the metric system actually uses degrees Celsius. This is a weird one uh, that you're, you're going to have to use in this course. The SI system actually uses a different unit for measuring temperature called Kelvin. Most people out there in the real world never use Kelvin to measure temperature, but we will actually use it later in this course, so I want you to be aware of it. There are formulas for converting between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit, and we will use them later in this course. The formulas for converting between Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit can be a little bit complicated and we'll talk about them later. Interestingly, converting between Celsius and Kelvin is, not, is actually really easy. If you want to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, you take the number in degrees Celsius and you add 273. So, if it's 10 degrees Celsius outside, the temperature in units of Kelvin is 10 plus 273, or 283 Kelvin. Please note that uh, the abbreviation for Kelvin does not have a degree symbol next to it. Finally, the metric system and the SI systems both measure time in units of seconds. Hopefully you're all familiar with how long a second is. I should also point out that this table shows the abbreviations for each of the units we discussed. Meter is abbreviated with the lowercase letter m. Liter can be abbreviated either with a capital or lowercase letter l. Gram is abbreviated with a lowercase g and you can hopefully just uh, look at the other abbreviations. So we'll be using many of these units throughout the rest of the course. You should know the standard metric units for length, 
mass, volume, temperature, and time. You should also be aware that Kelvin is a unit for measuring temperature, and you should know how to convert between degrees Celsius and Kelvin. So now let's talk a little bit in more detail about the metric system and length. As we mentioned in the previous slide, the standard metric unit for length is the meter. This is a cartoon of a meter stick, and they're trying to show you that one meter is about 39 inches in length, or one meter is slightly longer than one yard. They're also showing you something else. They're pointing out to you that sometimes you're measuring the length of things that are actually much smaller than one meter in length. Usually when you're measuring the length of something that's much smaller than a meter, you can actually break the meter into smaller pieces. If you break, the me if you break one meter into 100 even pieces, each of those pieces is called a centimeter. The centi and centimeter means that it's one one hundredth of one meter in length. And we'll talk a little bit more about what centi means in a few minutes. So, as I mentioned earlier, the metric system uses the liter to measure volume, and volume is how much space something takes up in three dimensions. With liquids, sometimes the easiest way to measure how much space they take up is to use a device called a graduated cylinder. On the left, you can see a graduated cylinder that's being used to measure the volume of a purple liquid. You can also see that sometimes you need to measure the volume of things that are much less than one liter in volume. Under these circumstances, you can break the liter into a thousand even pieces. Each of the thousand pieces is then called a millimeter, uh, a milliliter. Uh, hopefully, you can see that the purple liquid on the left has a volume of about 946 milliliters but we'll talk more about graduated cylinders later in the course. So if you're having difficulty understanding uh, how to read it, we'll, we'll deal with that later. I should also point out that the abbreviation for milliliter, for the milliliter unit is the letter M followed by the letter L. Sometimes you're trying to measure the volume of things that are much smaller than even a single milliliter. Under these conditions, you might use uh, volume units called microliters. If you break one single liter into one million even pieces, each of those pieces is a single microliter. The abbreviation for microliter is the Greek letter mu followed by the letter L. However, most people have difficulty finding the Greek letters on their keyboards, so very often people will informally substitute the letter U for the letter mu. So you might see units for microliter abbreviated with the letters U and L instead of mu and L. Again, we had talked about mass a few slides back. Typically, scientists measure mass using scales and balances. This slide shows an electronic scale that's measuring the mass of a nickel. And it looks like the nickel has a mass of about 5.01 grams. As, as with the liter and the meter, you can modify the units uh, of grams slightly. For example, if you're dealing with something that weighs much more than a single gram, you sometimes work with units called kilograms. A kilogram, or kilogram is uh, more accurately how it's pronounced, a kilogram is equal to the mass of 1,000 grams put together. And the abbreviation for kilogram is the letter K followed by the letter G. Again, sometimes you want... Uh, in addition to uh, finding the mass of things that weigh much more than a gram, sometimes you want to find the mass, or informally, the weight of things that weigh much less than a single gram. Under these circumstances, you can break the gram into a thousand even pieces. So imagine breaking a paper clip into a thousand even pieces. Each of these 1,000 pieces has a mass of one milligram. And you very often see the mass of uh, pills that you use in medicine um, and you will measure the mass of pills very frequently using milligrams. So this is a, a photograph of a pack of Valium pills, and each Valium pill has a mass of 5 milligrams. And I, I also want to point out there are times when you're measuring the mass or weight of something that weighs even much less than a single milligram. So under these situations, you might use a unit called the microgram. If you break one single gram into a million even pieces, so imagine breaking a paper clip into a million even pieces, each individual piece has a mass of one microgram. And again, the abbreviation is the Greek letter mu followed by the letter G. Or if you're in a pinch, you can abbreviate it with the letters U and G. And uh, finally, when we're talking about temperature, scientists will typically 
use either degrees Celsius or units of Kelvin. I want you to know uh, the temperature, uh, I want you to know uh, a handful of temperatures that are relevant um, for water. So I want you to know that water free, uh, the temperature that water freezes at, at the three major units. Water typically freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Celsius, or 273 Kelvin. I also want you to know the temperature, uh, the temperature that water boils at using the three major units. Water typically boils at 212 Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, or 373 Kelvin. And as you can see, converting between Celsius and Kelvin is just a matter of adding or subtracting 273. So here's a summary of what I want you to know about the metric and SI units. I want you to know the standard metric units for length, volume, mass, temperature, and time. I also want you to know the SI, that the SI system uses uh, units of Kelvin for measuring temperature. 